Hello, and thank you for watching this video on how to use the AWS Cloud Development Kit with the .NET Core Framework. Now, I'm Taz Hussain, a Solutions Architect here at Amazon Web Services. At its core, AWS CDK is a software development framework for defining cloud infrastructure as code and provisioning it through AWS CloudFormation. This means developers can use CDK with a programming language they're already familiar with to create CDK applications, which will generate CloudFormation scripts against the AWS environment of choice to be used for deploying resources. You can think of the development flow of a CDK project as follows. First, we create a project in Visual Studio and download pre-configured components, which in our case will be CDK NuGet packages. We then write code in our project to define resources and orchestrate deployments into our AWS environment. This can be done within the stack class. We then execute the deployment using the CDK CLI, which auto-generates CloudFormation scripts, uploads application resources we should deploy into our AWS accounts, and then deploys our application. To go deeper into these areas we've touched on, a few good places to start would be the AWS Cloud Development Kit landing page and the AWS Cloud Development Kit Developer Guide as linked in this slide. For the purposes of this video, I will show you how to create a new CDK project using the CDK CLI. We will use that project to write code which will upload static web pages onto AWS S3 to be hosted as publicly accessible websites using Amazon CDK NuGet packages. Let's get started. Before we start coding, let's install the AWS CLI toolkit. This can be done by running the following command in your prompt window. The AWS CLI toolkit is the primary tool for interacting with your AWS CDK app. It can execute your app, deploy your app, and generate CloudFormation templates from your CDK C Sharp application. Once installed, we can then run commands to create a project folder and then generate us a CDK.NET solution, which we will use as our CDK application. Now that we have the CDK CLI toolkit installed, let's go ahead and create a project folder. As you can see, we now have an empty project folder. This means we can go ahead and use the CDK CLI toolkit to generate a templated CDK project for us written in C Sharp using the .NET Core framework. This is done by setting the language parameter to C Sharp in the following command. If you look within the generated folder, we can see that there is a solution created. And if we open the solution, we can see that the following things have occurred. If we open the auto-generated solution file in Visual Studio 2019, we can see that we have a solution, a project, and a few auto-generated classes. Along with that, the CDK toolkit has also assigned a NuGet package to this project. This package is the Amazon CDK NuGet package and allows this project to interact with APIs in the AWS cloud. Let's have a look at the program.cs and the CDK S3 demo stick files and see what scaffolded code we have in there. Within the program.cs class, we can see that there is auto-generated code which creates a new CDK app. We can think of a CDK app as a scope for your CDK deployment. An app can contain one or many stacks. We can also see that the app is passed into the invocation of the CDK S3 demo stack. A stack is a unit of deployment. All resources defined within a stack are part of the stack's unit of deployment, meaning they are provisioned as a single unit when the stack is invoked. In our example, 
The stack will contain definitions for the components we will use in our application once it is deployed onto AWS. Since the use case we have is concerned with hosting static web pages on S3, our stack will contain S3 bucket definitions for hosting our websites, permissions to allow the websites to be publicly accessible, and references to the location of the website HTML files and associated assets like style sheets on our local machines, so they can be packaged into a zip file, deployed into our AWS accounts, and then hosted on our new S3 buckets. Using the template created by running our CDK init command, I have written code to help us deploy our websites. I have created a S3 static site CDK class, which is called by our stack class. The site CDK class contains code, which defines the AWS infrastructure components we need, along with the configuration we need to apply to correctly use those components in our use case. I have a dictionary containing the location of the website assets I want to upload, along with the name of the landing page for each site. Then, using a loop, I iterate through the dictionary and create a definition for an S3 bucket to host each site. The S3 bucket definition is configured by calling the get bucket prop method I have written. This method has a standardized configuration for S3 buckets hosting a publicly accessible website and is reused for each website I deploy. This means I can apply settings enforcing my organization's policies to a centralized block of logic, which can be reused each time a particular type of deployment occurs. An example of this could be a policy which dictates publicly accessible websites need to be destroyed if the deployments are removed from the stack. This may be necessary to ensure outdated information isn't available to the public. We have enforced this in our project by setting the removal policy property of our S3 buckets to destroy. This means that if the stack runs and doesn't have this CDK class initiated, the S3 buckets last created from this block of logic will be destroyed. What we can see from this class is that we have managed to avoid writing repeated code defining our deployments. Instead, we have reused code for assigning our S3 bucket and bucket deployment properties. This makes our code much easier to manage when we create infrastructure as code, as we can leverage the benefits of object-oriented programming languages. Now that we have run through the CDK application code, let's try and deploy this into our AWS account. The first time you deploy an AWS CDK app into an environment, you'll need to install a bootstrap stack. The stack includes resources that are needed for the toolkit's operation, such as an S3 bucket that is used to store templates and assets during the deployment process. The CDK bootstrap command takes about a minute to run, and once completed successfully, you should get a similar command prompt output to what I have on the screen right now. Once bootstrapping is complete, we can then run the CDK synth command to get a preview of the CloudFormation script generated by our .NET CDK project. As you can see, there is a very large CloudFormation script generated by the CDK toolkit. Luckily for us, we don't have to worry about writing or maintaining the CloudFormation script, but rather focus on the .NET project which generates the scripts. Now that we have bootstrapped our AWS environment and previewed the CloudFormation scripts auto-generated by the CDK toolkit, the next step for us is to execute deployments. This can be done by running the CDK deploy command in our command prompt. When this command runs, the CDK toolkit calls AWS APIs to start the deployment process into our AWS accounts. This can take a few minutes as resources are provisioned and assets like our website content are uploaded to AWS. Let's wait for the process to finish and check once it is done.
This deployment can take a few minutes, and as you can see, once the deployment has finished successfully, we'll be presented with a similar output to what you're seeing on my command line interface. Now, let's log into our AWS console and have a look at the resources provisioned by this deployment. If you log into our AWS web console, we are able to go to the CloudFormation page and see two things. First, we can see the CloudFormation script, which is an output of the CDK bootstrap command we had run. This script created AWS components required to run CDK against this account. Next, we can see the CloudFormation script, which is generated from our CDK application. This script was generated when we ran the CDK deploy command in the console window. Now going to S3, we can see two more things. First, we can see the S3 bucket generated by the CDK bootstrap command. This bucket is used to upload assets to as they are being deployed within our environment. Looking inside the bucket, we will see several zip files, some of which are website assets we have selected to be hosted on S3 as public static websites. We can also see the three S3 buckets generated by our CDK application. Each bucket hosts one of our websites as we had defined it in our CDK app. And going into the bucket, we can see the assets we had selected to be uploaded. Now that we have reviewed the CDK deployment, let's see if our websites are correctly hosted on S3. If you recall, we had specified in our bucket props method that the S3 bucket needed to have public read access and each site had a different web index document name. The index document names were index.html, index2.html, and index3.html. Let's have a look at the bucket properties to see if these settings were applied correctly. Okay, so for the first bucket, we can see index3.html had been applied. The bucket is configured to host a website. And now let's click on this link to see if that website is publicly available. Cool. Let's check the others. This is a slightly more complex website that I had chosen for this project, just to demonstrate that we can upload subdirectories, JavaScript files, and style sheets. Again, looking at the properties of the bucket, we can see that index.html had been applied as the index document name. It is a publicly accessible website. And clicking on the link, we can see the content comes up just fine. Let's apply the same to the last website we had. Okay, a single HTML file, great. Index2.html, public website, and the link is accessible. C cool. So I think this finishes demonstrating the fact that we can use C Sharp and CDK to auto-generate infrastructure in AWS without having to learn a different language or different methodology to what we already know. Let's go ahead and summarize what we've learned here. Let's recap what's happened in this video so far. First, we created a new CDK app to upload three static websites onto the AWS cloud to be hosted on S3 buckets. We did this using c -sharp .NET Core, Visual Studio, and Amazon.CDK NuGet packages. We also used CLI commands that were able to provision our cloud application onto the AWS cloud and take care of the heavy lifting for us. We didn't have to learn any new languages, and we only used tools we were already familiar with. Some of these commands are listed here on the slide. If you'd like to learn more about them, please go to the CDK landing page or the CDK developer guide for more information. Thank you very much for watching this video, and I hope it was of help to you.